This is the Order 4 V1 3D printer. I will make a quick review about this one as well and then I would like to know your opinion. But first let's start with some specs and then we'll make some tests. The printing size is of 310 by 260 mm and also height of 305 mm as well. The frame is made out of hard aluminum and the metal sheet structure. It comes by default with a 0.4 mm nozzle that could get up to 260 degrees. The heat bed could get up to 80 degrees so probably printing ABS is not that good. But the specs say that it could print PLA, ABS, PETG, IHAPS and wood. The one that I have is for Europe and it works at 230 volts, but the power supply has a 150 volt switch inside of the case if you are from US. As for some extra specs, the printer has an automatic level system with a capacitance sensor, which we will test later. It has a power resume option in case that you turn off the printer by mistake, and it uses a dual linear rails, which I haven't used till now so I can't say if they are better or not. I have to say that this model that I have is an upgraded version. I've seen some other videos on YouTube with the first model of this printer and it had a few problems. I would like to mark some of the parts that they say they are now fixed. First, the thermistor of the first model was loose and got out very easy and that is very dangerous. But now the thermistor is fixed in place, in order to prevent hazard. They've added a bigger cooling fan inside of the electronics case. The first model of this printer had a built tech material on the printing bed and that wasn't working very well. But now we have this kind of glass or plastic surface that we'll test later as well. They say that this is the development of a new type of thermal bed film, so we'll have to see the results. The power supply is a 24 volts one, so heating faster but under less current. They've also improved the packaging, and I say this because the first version there were a lot of complaints about receiving the printer damage because of shipping. I had no problems with that and the printer I have arrived in good conditions. As for safety features, the power supply and the high voltage are inside of the metal case, we have a fuse inside of the main connector and they've also improved the temperature protection function. Ok, so that being said, let's see how to mount this printer when we receive it. Make a few tests and see if this printer is good or not. Make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell in order to see my future videos. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's start with a very quick unbox and see what we have. I received the printer in a cardboard box and we have the protective foam inside to prevent damaging during shipping. Inside we have two separated compartments. The bottom one has the entire printer frame and the top one just some filament, some extra tools and the manual. But now I take everything out in order to see what we really have. The first thing that I see is a last screw inside of the case and this is not a good sign. We will have to check all the screws later. Anyway, I now remove all the plastic bags and let's see all the parts. In one of the plastic bags I found another last screw. Ok, so this is all that we have. The main case of the printer. The two rails for the Z axis and also two lead screws. The X axis part with the nozzle block. The back part of the X axis and the top part of the frame. On the other side we have some tools, some PLA samples and the manual. And I also have this metal spool holder, so this is all that we have. By the way, the two lost screws were from the X axis belt system and that's why they were loose. Ok guys, so let's take the manual and mount this printer. This was very easy and fast. Step 1 we add the spool holder. Then for step 2 we add the rails for the Z axis and add the screws. Then we have to make the entire X axis and slide it in place on top of the printer. Connect the wire and close the case and then we can add the lead screws. We have to add the metal bar on top of the printer and then connect the bottom tube. I peel the heat bed plastic and the printer frame is ready. Use the two pieces of wood to level both sides of the X axis. And now for the first time that I tried to pour it on I got nothing. That's because the supply was fixed at 110 volts and here in Spain we have 220 volts and the fuse blow up. But the printer has a spare, so I place that, I change the switch and now the printer works. 
Ok, so I powered it on, and leveling this printer is very easy. Just follow the menu and instructions. So now I add the PLA sample spool, I insert the filament into the detector and then into the extruder and extrude a little bit of filament. Then I insert the SD card that came with the printer and print the first example just to test it directly out of the box. I get some perfect first layers and very good contact with the printing bed surface. Since this is a 20 hours print and I didn't knew that, I take this opportunity and test the power recovery function. So for that I turn off the printer. We wait a little bit and pour it back on. Now I get on the screen the resume print option. I select that and the printer continues the same print. And it actually does a very good job and I can see no missed layers where the print stopped. Ok, in the same way, let's also check the filament detector. I cut the filament and I wait for the detector to react. When the filament is out of the sensor, the print stops and the printer will go a few centimeters upwards and then go to the home position. Now you have to remove the old filament and add the new one. After you do that, on the screen press the knob and wait for the nozzle to heat up. Then it will extrude a little bit of filament and you will get the continue option on the screen. So press that and it will continue the print. Anyway, I'll stop this print because it's too long and I want to try different tests. But this looks like it would have been a good print. Ok, so first I test a small banshee. The printer started very good and the print took around 1 hour. I was using 3 parameters, 20% infill and PLA material for this print. The front part of the boat, the door and the window and even inside of the boat looks quite ok. But for some reason we had some fails on the back part of the boat with some loose filament. There is no wiring between the walls of the boat or skip layers. But now I print another part using a different PLA material. Because I don't want to waste plastic, I printed some parts that I need for a future project on this channel. I am trying to make a 3D printed motor so stay tuned for that as well. This is one of the core parts of that motor printed in brown PLA material. As you can see the part end up very good. The layers are ok and the best of all the size is very good so all the bearings and the nuts that I want to use will fit ok inside of this part. I also like the bottom surface that the part has. Because of the smooth surface of the heated bed, the final texture is the same as if you would print on glass. I don't know what material is this but it's very sticky for PLA, it will stick a lot better than glass and it will also give a smooth texture to the printed parts. So in overall this was a good print. I don't want to be annoying with PLA prints but it's important to see all these results. I almost always use PLA for my prints so I have to know how this printer performs. I've changed a little bit the slice settings and lowered the speed and printed another part for my 3D printed motor. This part turned out perfect, good layers and good infill and the expected size that I wanted. This one is made with black PLA material. Ok now for other materials I've also tested ABS. The bed temperature is set in the configuration of the printer and that could go up to only 85 degrees. Till now my best ABS print was this fax made with the Flashforge Adventurer 3. Now I've used the same ABS material and printed another fax to compare. The quality is not as good as the Adventurer 3 but it's pretty decent. First of all the first layers were bad and broke down. But the best of all is that were no wrapped layers and that's important with ABS. In my opinion the print ended up ok and I'm sure that we could improve this by keeping the temperature the same in the room. I've also tested flexible material at very low speeds. I wanted to print this tire. The quality is not the best but for a flexible filament this is quite ok. The speed was very low but the filament had no problems with the bottom extrusion. In around 2.5 hours I had this tire printed with flexible material so we could do flexible as well with this printer and that's a good thing to have. Then I've tested PETG and the results were not as good as with PLA. I wanted a stronger part for the core of my 3D printed motor. So I've made the same part but with PETG but as you can see the print quality was not the same. But this could also be because of the bad slicer settings for the PETG and also because my filament was not the best. But anyway the part is now harder. I will make some more tests with PETG and post those on my Instagram in the future. Finally I've printed nylon and just as PLA the print turned out very good. I've printed this tower that I usually use for tests and the results are ok. Printing with nylon is good when you want to make long lasting parts, so have in mind this printer can also do nylon but you have to increase a little bit the temperature. 
and finally I've made another PLA test. And this was printing great, but failed at the end. As you can see, this print didn't have too much base surface, so the print got loose and the final layers were printed in free air. So adding a base to your prints should be a good idea. The rest of the print turned out great in my opinion. We have a few loose filaments below the head, and that's because I had no support enabled. Ok guys, so apart from these tests, what more do we have for this printer? The wires are all covered inside of the plastic guide, and that makes the printer look better. But I don't understand why the case is so big. I mean 60% of the metal case is empty. Other printers have the electronics below, but the case is a lot smaller. Anyway, it uses this board and is based on the Marlin code, and the step motor drivers are the A4988 and are directly soldered to the board. These are a little bit old and also you can change them because are soldered to the PCB. The supply is 24 volts, and once I've tied a little bit the connectors more, everything seems ok. There's a cooling fan on top of the controller board. At this price I was expecting a better screen, but we have the common blue LCD as other old 3D printers. The automatic level system is ok, and you could also change the z-axis offset in the menu, in case that the sensor is not perfect. As I said in the intro of the video, the thermistor is now fixed in place and the entire nozzle block was redesigned and it seems to be better now. The printer has dual lead screw and that will leave the axis, and that's good to have for big and heavy printers. Dual motor will have more power to leave the axis. I like there is some space between the filament sensor and the extruder, so you could take out the filament in case that it got broken or if you want to change the color. But I don't like the misalignment between the extruder and the sensor. Also that the filament has almost 90 degrees coming from the spool holder and that might break the filament. Some of the screws of the case weren't tight enough, but that just took me one more minute to fix with an allen key and a screwdriver. The prints were ok, even better than expected, because I've seen on YouTube a lot of bad prints with the old version of this printer. But for me, till now, I had good results with different materials. It has a big printing area and I have to say that I really like the new type of printing surface. It has like a glass finish but also very sticky. It seems to be some kind of rubber type foil. So in overall I like this printer but there are a few things to improve. I would like better drivers for the step motors. Also to tight better the screws when they ship the package out and maybe find a better place for the spool holder and the filament sensor. Also a smaller case would be better. The power resume option and the filament detector work ok. Heats up very fast and in my opinion pretty decent prints. The price tag right now is around 365 euros. The size is almost the same as the Creality CR10 for example, but the price is a bit lower. Also an improvement from the CR10 is that the Order 4 has the electronics below the case and that will occupy less space. So that's pretty much for this review. Have in mind that I've only used it for the prints in the video, so I don't have a long term experience with it. I will try to post more results on Instagram. I hope that you've made a general idea of this printer and that this video will help you to decide to buy or not this printer. Make sure you subscribe and give a like to this video. Also activate the notification bell in order to see my future videos. A huge thank you to all my patrons for the support. So thanks again and see you later guys.